Welcome to Chapter 3 of Noble Discoveries. In this chapter, we will discover ways of reducing galvanic corrosion using bonding and sacrificial anodes. Mike, don't forget to mention that our friends should first view Chapters 1 and 2. Oh, hi, Elvin. Thanks for reminding me. In the last chapter, we learned about some standards from the American Boat and Yacht Council, ABYC. We also discovered a voltage known as corrosion potential that can be produced by different metals found on a boat. Isn't there a term for different metals? There certainly is. In scientific terms, when we have two metals that have different corrosion potential, they are called dissimilar metals. Noble has dissimilar metals. She sure does. Let's see what happens when we measure the voltage between a brass through hull and an aluminum through hull. Look at that! We made a battery! We call that a galvanic cell. A galvanic cell happens when we have at least two dissimilar metals in water and a voltage is produced. Oh no! What's wrong, Elbin? My poor boat! This means that Noble has corrosion! It does look like Noble may have some galvanic corrosion taking place. The good news is that this type known as galvanic corrosion is somewhat gradual. There are other types of corrosion we will learn about in future chapters that can cause damage more swiftly. But I want Noble to last a long time. What can be done to stop this voltage from causing corrosion? Let's see if we can discover a couple ways to do just that. While measuring the voltage between the same two through hulls, we'll connect a wire between them. Hooray! The voltage disappeared! When we connected our through hulls with this wire, we discovered something called bonding. That does look like something 007 would use to save the day. Not that bond. Connecting through hulls together with a conductor, such as a wire, is known as bonding. Let's go ahead and bond all of the through hulls together on Noble. That was easy. So are we done? Not quite. Like most systems on a boat, a bonding system needs to be properly checked and maintained. After all, if a bonding wire breaks or the connections fail, the bonding system will stop functioning properly. That makes sense. So are we done yet? I want to go sailing. Not yet, Elvin. We only took care of the voltage between our through hulls. There is still collective voltage between our bonding system and the water. Let's use the silver-silver chloride corrosion reference electrode we discovered in an earlier chapter and measure the voltage from Noble's bonding system. There is voltage! It's negative 395 millivolts. Is that okay? This voltage is called our hull potential. To answer your question if negative 395 millivolts is okay or not, we can turn to ABYC E2 Table 2 and see what is recommended. For a fiberglass hull such as ours, ABYC recommends a reading from negative 550 millivolts to negative 1100 millivolts. So it looks like we need to improve things. Our reading of negative 395 millivolts means that we need to add sacrificial anodes to our bonding system. Not only do we need to add them outside somewhere below the waterline, they must also be connected to our bonding system. This is often done with green marine grade wire. On Noble, we have all three types of sacrificial anodes mounted to our hull. Magnesium, zinc, and aluminum. My faithful assistant Elbin will show you where the connecting wires on each are located. Here is the wire connected to the magnesium anode. And here is the wire connected to the zinc anode. Last, here is the wire connected to the aluminum anode. Mike, how do we know which type to use? Again, we can turn to ABYC standards where they recommend the following. One reason why zinc is not recommended in fresh water is that zinc can get charcoal colored tarnish on it. Over time, the zinc may not provide enough protection. That's the same reason we don't paint or wax over sacrificial anodes. Since Noble is floating in fresh water, let's hook up our magnesium anode and see if that helps. Great idea, Elbin. Sure enough, our hull potential is now negative 980 millivolts. Great! That means our bonding system and sacrificial anodes are working together to protect Noble. Why is it protecting Noble? because corrosion likes to take place on our sacrificial anodes before attacking our more noble boat metals, such as through hulls. 
Let's look back at that ABYC E2 galvanic metals chart that we discovered in Chapter 2. We can see that metals that have a larger negative voltage, like magnesium, tend to be labeled anodic or less noble, where other metals, like stainless steel, tend to be labeled cathodic or more noble. What do you mean by tend to be? The labels have to do with comparing one type of metal against another and where they fall in the chart. Another discovery. Yes, we have discovered that a metal that is often referred to as an anode, such as zinc, can actually be a cathode if being compared to a metal like magnesium. But when zinc is compared to a metal further down the chart, such as bronze, then zinc becomes the anode and bronze the cathode. Items like bronze through hulls can have a cathodic effect and be more noble if they are connected to a metal that is less noble which has an anodic effect like aluminum, magnesium, or zinc. Since corrosion will generally attack the least noble metal first, we can use this discovery to protect metals on our boats. That's also why Chapter E2 from ABYC is called Cathodic Protection. Now I know why they call this type of protection for boats sacrificial anodes. Because for corrosion protection, you use the less noble metal that has an anodic effect, such as zinc, magnesium, or aluminum, than the metal you are trying to protect. Yes, and as this takes place, the anode is sacrificed. Is it possible to add too many anodes? Yes, it is, especially if you have a hull made of wood. You can see by the chart that the range for a wooden hull is only negative 550 to negative 600 millivolts. Why is that, Mike? Experts discovered that when excessive amounts of anodic protection is used on a wood hull, alkaline areas around submerged metals such as through hulls can form. That alkaline environment can be especially harmful to the cellulose fibers in the wood. Whew! I am so glad that Noble is now protected against corrosion. Actually, we have only learned about a couple measures to protect against galvanic corrosion. There is another type of corrosion that can cause more harm and do it faster. It is called stray current corrosion, and we will save that for another chapter. Always be safe. If you notice corrosion, act swiftly. These videos are an introduction only, and there is more to these topics. We encourage each of you to learn more.